and why I love these plans. So I'll just go through them, my top five, and at the end, maybe a couple of honorable mentions, which are good plans as well. I hate doing that, so why has I just done that? Why? Hello, Jordy Skate here, and welcome to my adventures in Apple Skating. On today's video, what I'm going to talk about is my top five favourite plants, especially for those new to the hobby and just want to keep it simple, keep it easy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break down five plants which I love, I've used over the years and I think they're really good and not difficult to keep. So enjoy this one and I hope it provides some use to yourselves and it answers some questions which I've been getting over this last year or two about what plants to use in a plant aquarium. So the plants I'm going to talk about are all what I personally use and I enjoy using and I know I've had good success with them. So the idea is, is to bring that information to yourselves and on the way I'll give you some hints and tips how I've kept the plants healthy. The first plants I'm going to talk about is the ones you actually plant in soil. So all of these plants, as long as you've got good quality soil, and keep on top of your water changes, good maintenance practice, that sort of thing. Half decent lighting and circulation filtration. As long as you've got all those sort of things, you don't necessarily need CO2 injection or really high levels of light. I always recommend getting a good aquarium soil. But some of the plants we're going to talk about are heavy roof feeders and a good quality soil deals does really make the difference. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Steragoyne repens or S repens people call it. All the plants I'm talking about today are classed as easy category within the tropical range, so no CO2 is necessarily needed, although it does help with growth, health, that sort of thing, but it isn't needed and I've had good success growing these in low energy scapes. So Steragoyne repens, it's classed as a stem plant and what's good about that is you only need a couple of pots to start with. So you just break the pot up, plant where you need it, and to keep it nice and compact and clustered, every time you do a little trimming, you just snip it off just before the node and replant and you'll get a nice cluster. It can even be used as a carbon plant as well. So Steragonia repens, really good plant. Just keep trimming, keep it nice and compact, don't let it go because like a lot of plants without CO2 injection, highlighting, it does get a bit leggy. So you're best off just trimming and keeping a nice cluster. It's really good transition plant to go from foreground mid ground so if you're using rocks that sort of thing so really nice little clusters of rocks but it's a really really good plant so i highly recommend steragoyne repens number two on my list is helianthem tenelum green gorgeous carbon plant does grow quite tall it's a really nice thick bladed dark grass and a great plant to use especially if you're just starting out doesn't need co2 although like i said earlier it does help but I've grew plenty without CO2 injection in a few tanks and it's, it's a really good plant. One little tip I would do with that is don't trim it like a regular lawn type of plant. I've tried that in the past and it did survive and it's okay but you don't want to cut the blades. What it does is shoots out runners. If you're a gardener, a bit like bamboo, shoots out the runners and new growth comes from them runners. So new blades of grass. So all you do when it's getting a bit crazy because it can become a bit evasive is just snip away that runner Replant it somewhere, or just get rid, sensibly of course, and it'll just grow and grow. <laughs> it's a really good carbon plant. I wouldn't say in nano tanks, I wouldn't have it right in the foreground because it can get around about 10, 12 centimetres tall. But I've got one in my Uragumi, which I'll overlay, and I've used that as a backdrop. And because the soil's raised, it looks like a tall plant, but I would happily use it as a carbon plant. So Helianthem Tenelum Green. Number three on the list is Cryptochorine Wendii Tropica. Pronunciation is really <laughs> Crypt Tropica. A um, really good crypt. In fact, most crypts, you can use a lot of variety of crypts and you'll have success with them. People are kind of like scared of crypts because they do melt, usually not all the time but they go through a transition period. So when you bring it back from the shop, plant it, it melts. But as long as it's got a healthy rootstock, it does come back and it comes back really nice. The reason I said tropical is because it's got a really nice um, hammered leaf appearance with like little wobbly leaves. And it comes, it can go in different colors depending on your light, depending on the conditions, but like a, a light brown, orangey tinge, darker green, 
but it's a really good beginner plant and you can't go wrong to be honest really good so again planting cycle or really heavy root feeders you know they're a massive root stock off them so a nutrient rich base substrate is well recommended for your crypts the next plants i'm going to talk about are epiphyte plants so epiphyte just means they attach to wood or rock and they feed off the water column rather than root in the soil if you do put them in soil what you call the rhizome the rhizome will just melt and die so don't bury an epiphyte plant epiphytes you've got ferns your nubia species your butterflyandra species all that sort of thing the tie on wood with like moss cotton cotton you tie them on you can actually glue on with them which i tend to do using sort of glue just for speed quickness and you can also just wedge them into spaces so if you've got nooks crannies holes gaps you can just wedge them in there and eventually over time the roots will just cling to the rock or wood so that's an epiphyte plant in in a nutshell basically first of my favorite is trident fern that's a, again easy category from tropica trident fern is a really good focal point plant um, again i love leaf footage so you'll see that so trident fern it's a narrow leaf and it spreads out like a trident fork and um, so it's a really it's a gorgeous plant so again you just wedge it in the space so pick your fo focal point usually just off center somewhere in your escape and straight away it transforms that escape by that immediate effect so trident fern is a really good one for that a tip I will give for trident fern, or most ferns, so you've got java fern, trident fern, things like that. A good tip for you, the leaves can look a bit ugly, um, so they're brown off. So the best thing to do is snip away at the base, the old leaves, and leave room for the new leaves. I've said this in previous videos, it's always good to let the plant put energy into growth, not repair. So anything that's not too healthy, just snip it off and get rid of that. So if you see brown and the ugly leaves, Get rid and you can spot the new leaves by if you look closely at a fern on the tips they go like a darker green and that's a sign of new healthy growth so leave as much as that you can snip away them bad ones and soon you'll have a nice compact fresh looking fern and that's the best way to keep them so i think what people tend to do is just leave them in the look they go from being a gorgeous plant to absolutely ugly they wear brown horrible brown dots on and don't worry if you see little plantlets on the tip of the leaves, that's the way they actually produce new plantlets. You can actually just nip them off carefully if you want to, and you can just replant them or put them in another scape, and eventually that little plantlet will become a full on mother plant type of thing eventually over years. It's classed as a slow grower, but I don't find it too slow. I think it quite it takes over quite quick if it's well looked after. The only thing I would say about epiphyte plants is you haven't got the soil, obviously the soil low is leaching goodness as well, but the water comes, that's where good quality liquid fertiliser comes in, so it's good to do it at least a couple of times a week to feed your epiphyte plants. So that's where I would really recommend a good quality liquid fern. Yeah, so that's trying fern. Another of my personal favourites, I've used it loads and loads, is Anubius Petite. That has got a thicker, broader leaf than the ferns. And it's really good. I like to put it in large clusters around the base of rocks. I think it works really well there. There are slow growers, so try and keep them up. They like to grow better and shade, to be honest. And the main reason is they don't get covered in algae the leaves if it's out of light. If they don't like too much, they do tend to hold algae. It doesn't really do the plant too much harm, but it isn't too good about that. So that's where the algae and crew usually come in. But if it's just dust algae, you can just wipe the leaves when you're doing a maintenance session, or just get rid of it and allow for that new growth. But it is a lovely compact slow grower that looks lovely in between bases of rocks and those little spaces so same as the other epiphytes if you squeeze it in a gap eventually the roots will just cling to that rock stone wood so yeah that's my top five easy category plants which you can grow in a tank without co2 injection without serious high levels of light but all those plants we've talked about do do well with co2 injection you get faster growth usually get healthier growth and some of the plants can appear different with CO2 injection but they can look just as nice in lower energy tanks. So honorable mentions we'll have narrow leaf fern which again is a gorgeous fern if you can't get your hands on trident fern you could try the narrow leaf fern and it's exactly the same principles apply to a narrow leaf as the trident. Nip away that old growth, get away old leaves, 
allow for the new growth again. I've got the dog tips. You see them dog tips? Tips. You see, I do that all the time. I do that all the time. Again, you see the dog tips, and that's the new growth. Get away the brown and horrible leaves, big leaves, holy leaves, um, cut leaves, that sort of thing. Just get rid of them. And all you do, just nip them with your fingers from the base if you've got fingernail. From the base, right near the rhizome, or just get your scissors in there, snip that away, and then you're allowing for that new growth. And another great plant, which is it's gorgeous, is Bucephalandra kerrigan, uh, which is nepophyte. It does do a little bit better with light, so you can put that further up the tank, and it does enjoy the light. It actually grows out out of the water as well. But Anubius petite just pips it to the post for me. I, I, I'm a real Anubius fan. There's loads and loads of species of Bucephalandra, but kerrigan is my personal fave. I have good success with it and it grows a little quicker than other bush species because it's class. Uh, it's a slow grower like a newbies like the ferns but I've had good success with that so that's me honourable mentions. So as I was saying before these are my personal choices of plants I would recommend to you guys especially if you're just starting out or you just want to make a nice easy tank that's not too hard to maintain. You don't want to pump CO2 injection just yet but if you are pumping CO2 injection just as good. You'll get a really good Nature Aquarium style aquarium with these type of plants commonly used by the ADA guys, Takashi Mono and George Farmer, if you watch George Farmer's channel. These plants are used and used for good reason because they're easier, people are successful with, with, with them and if you have success with your planting tank in the early days it wants to make you go on keeping, keeping going with the hobby, buying horror to keep plants which are demanding with CO2 highlighting from the off and you lose them, it's a bit off-putting. So that's why it's always good to try the easier carry plants. If you go in the shops, you're seeing all got tabs on, you've got your easier carry plants. And all easy means is lower lighting levels, doesn't require CO2 injection. That's that's all that means. You've got a good chance of succeeding with those plants. Good maintenance, look after your filters, good filtration, good circulation, all the stuff that goes with it. You should have good success with those plants we've just talked about. So I hope this video has been of some use to you. If it has, please give us a big like. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and hit that notification bell, and that way you won't miss a thing. Every time I upload a video, you'll get that ting ting, and you'll see a video from me. So thanks for watching, guys. Really hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, until next video, see you later.